When we are living, we are in the Lord. And when we're dying, we are in the Lord. For in our living and in our dying, we belong to God. We belong to God. Till earth is over, may we always know Love never fails us, God has made it so. Hard times will prove us, but never remove us. For we belong to God, we belong to God. Welcome, dear people. Thank you to this Samhain. Thank you for coming to this Samhain episode of Chants and Prayers. My name is Reverend Simon Ruth de Boyle, and I'm very excited to be here. It is the day before Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, and Samhain is the Irish Gaelic word for November and the season that begins tomorrow, the high holy day in our house. I'd like to do a land acknowledgement, especially when we're praying with the earth. You know, so much of Samhain is about this cross-quarter moment that is halfway between the autumn equinox and the winter solstice. And um, those moments mean nothing unless you are in the landscape and living connected with the land. So let's do a land acknowledgement. This is Abenaki land where I live. In the green mountains of Vermont, we're up quite high. We've had our first snow already. And as we pray with the land and love the land, may we remember that this is Abenaki land, as I said. And think about the welfare of the Abenaki people. And a huge shout out, actually, to the Abenaki people for um, raising awareness around the health of the waterways especially Lake Champlain, so that stewardship of the earth. May indigenous voices be lifted up and may we listen, <laughs> may I listen. Long land acknowledgement today, but uh, a lot of uh, what I've been thinking about is the water because, um, well, more about that later. I want to say that um, I'll be a little bit pagan today and druid-leaning. Um, so um, if your faith tradition is not that, then please know that you're very, very welcome here. And you don't have to try and speak like Reverend Simon Ruth de Boyle in the chat. Just be yourself. Okay. Um, I have a, a lovely opening song for us. It's called Coming Home by Peter Mayer. And um, I haven't played it since last year, so I hope I can remember how. I first heard this in 2012 when my friend Amy Ringel came to Scotland with me and we were driving around, we were doing a tour and um, I remember driving through Perthshire and her singing this and it just landed straight in my heart and I thought, oh, one day I need to learn that song. When trees are turning, chimney smoke is curling, fallen leaves are swirling, I'll be coming home. When geese are wending, apple branches bending, when the summer's ending, I'll be coming home. When autumn's first frost glistens on the corn stalks, bales of hay and sweet squash, I'll be coming home. When hill and meadow are crimson, rust and yellow, when autumn's fruits are mellow, I'll be coming home. Unrest will greet me, love will receive me in joy Like a deep red wine fill my heart <clears throat> I have been trotting the furrowed fields of summer Footsteps heavy under the seats I've come to sow When some have sprouted and I have hoped and doubted And every bushel's counted I'll be coming home Unrest will greet me Love will receive me Joy like a deep red wine Fill my heart Unrest will greet me Love will receive me Joy like a deep red wine Fill my heart Nights will be cold then Foxes in their holes then Skies awaiting snow when 
I'll be coming home. When hearts are burning and tables set for sterling, I will be returning. I'll be coming home. Coming home by Peter Mayer. Beautiful song. Mm. So that's where we're going today. We're going to be jumping into the season of Samhain, the blessings that it holds. And um, on Friday, I'm teaching to a lot of people about how to make the mythology real. So any insights you could pop into the chat that will help me on Friday would be great. Specifically, what I'm supposed to be teaching about are the, the practices that we can do our own Samhain Halloween practices that, that um, help us deepen the imagination and the mythology into something that grows us in love. You know, what's the point of celebrating Halloween as an adult if it doesn't ultimately bring us closer to the sacred and the invisible realms, the good ancestors, and of course our good God. Opening prayer from, for, from us, well actually today it's an opening poem by Rilke. The leaves fall, fall as from far, like distant gardens withered in the heavens. They fall with slow and lingering descent. And in the nights the heavy earth too falls, from out of the stars into the solitude. Thus all doth fall. This hand of mine must fall, and lo, the other one, it's the law. But there is one who holds this falling infinitely softly in his hands. I've never made a jack lantern before. It's got a very bright candle in, well, not candle, light in it. But later on <laughs> tonight, I'll have a little tea light. So um, I've never made a jack-o'-lantern before because I'm Scottish and when I was a kid we would carve turnips which I have to say is much 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 more work and much harder <laughs> and it smells terrible the turnips are small right so the lid gets really burnt um, with the candle and it, it really doesn't smell very good there's none of this caramelized thing you North Americans have got a real advantage by being able to grow these pumpkins they're much easier much easier so this is my very first jack-o'-lantern and um, I really enjoyed making that. But it's only one of many things that um, we will do in our household to celebrate Samhain. I'm going to show you um, what I was up to this morning. Thank you, Roxanne, for the compliment about the pumpkin. Um, this is this morning. All right there is the spring. It doesn't look like very much. It's just a plastic pipe that comes out of the earth. Um, and here I am cleaning it in preparation for tomorrow. Now, um, what can I tell you about this? So this is the spring that brings fresh water to our house. It's the reason there was a dairy farm here is because the water comes out of the mountain. And in Scotland, this is high holy places. This is a high holy, whereas here is just a little dirty plastic pipe that dumps out beautiful, sweet water. Um, and it's what fills the, the pond that you'll be seeing many videos of today. And um, it basically flows through our basement as well. And um, why am I clean? Why was I cleaning this? Well, I was cleaning this in, you know, a bit like how uh, people dress up, dress up like on Halloween. I'm ending work early, and I'm going to put on either a black tie or my tartan tie and a waistcoat to get ready to honour this holy moment in the year. Now, what it's got to do with the spring is that I believe that we're um, the water meets the earth is very, very holy, but it's also full of nature energies. You know, we're, we feel different when we are by the ocean or by a spring um, or by a river. And, and I think part of that is there's an invisible aspect going in, um, what people call fairies or nature spirits. And I want to tell you a story about these guys here. 
<laughs> I'll make this a little bit smaller and me a bit bigger. Because um, when we first moved here, I did introduce myself to the land and ask for permission, uh, I think before we even looked at the property, um, and explained what I do as a minister. I mean, this is all crazy, how do you explain to land? But in my imagination, I showed what I do and I talk to a screen and really what I'm doing is helping humans drop into the earth and pray for their loved ones and receive healing and, um, and grow in their faith. And so I introduced the work that I do and introduced that I see this living earth as holy. <laughs> right? And um, it was September we moved in and on uh, the first Halloween I didn't remember to explain to the land that we do a whole ritual and we put out a plate of food for the ancestors right next to the, the holy place. In the last place it was a tree, whereas here is the spring. We'll actually make a little plate from our special holy feast. I think we're going to have lamb this year. A little bit of everything. The little plate gets made up first. Now clearly um, fairies don't eat lamb. <laughs> <laughs> or mead or whatever it is we put out and I'm sure the dogs just go and find it and have a great time um, and we get the empty plates the next day but this day, right, so it, it was a Sunday woke up on Halloween and I neglected to tell um, the land that we were going to do this ritual and um, what happened was uh, the basement flooded the washing machine broke the dishwasher broke um, my wood pile outside collapsed both are Phones flew off the table. And to top all, this was the one that pissed me off. It was a Sunday morning and I was doing church. I was a British pastor. So when I, I put my tab, my little white tab thing on, this snapped in half. And at that point, I stormed out of the house and <laughs> went exactly to the spot and said, You know, guys, you can't behave like this. We're going to honor you. You are part of our prayers. You just need to wait. And I came back in and I did church and, I, and my little rant was over. Now, I'm telling you this story, um, well, first of all, because I think it's amusing. But secondly, it shows a little bit of how I really do believe that this um, living land sees us. Now, in the, in the old Celtic ways, John O'Donoghue talks about this a lot. We believe that the dead uh, go into the land and that all that's happened in a place um, is held and remains in the land. And that this is part of how we access the timeless nature of who we are. And it wasn't until oh, not that long ago, a couple of years ago, maybe six or seven years ago, that one of my friends used the word ancestor and God interchangeably in his song. And I thought, oh, wait, wait what? And then I started paying attention and I heard people like James Finlay quoting Merton saying, we can't see the dead for the same reason we can't see God. Ears prick up. We can't see the dead for the same reason we can't see God. They're no longer separate from us. Right, so this invisible realm is linked with all that happens in a place and the land and the living spirit and that we are the outbreath, the, 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 the tip of an ancestral lineage. And that's what Halloween is all about. It's about um, a portal into the invisible world. Why is there a portal? Because it's the beginning of the Celtic year. The Celtic year, like I would say the Jewish year, right, starts at the end of the growing season, just as the time of death is beginning. Very interesting, very different from our modern psychology. And when you begin to think about that, you can understand, oh, this isn't just a Druid Celtic thing. This is a holy, um, sacred truth that probably transcends all religions, not just the earth-based ones. So, <laughs> I've told you about our little feast and... Um, that we put a little ancestor plate out. Sometimes we also put out the genealogy books and I've got some ancestral books and I usually wear tartan and um, we honour the ancestors and also our loved ones who have died in the last year. And that's a big part of what 
um, Samhain is in the Christian tradition, there's all saints and all souls. And I think the all souls aspect is very powerful for people. And I know that in some cultures, people go and sit on graveyards and have meals and joyful, joyfully connect with their dead. I want to sing some songs and stop talking. And if you feel like writing in, if you have any Samhain practices or ways of honouring the dead, maybe at a different time of year, maybe you do that um, on the anniversary of the death or at the calendar New Year. I'm going to sing this lovely Jewish prayer called We Remember. <laughs> In the rising of the sun, we remember In the blowing of the wind, we remember In the opening of the buds, we remember We remember In the blueness of the sky, we remember In the rustling of the leaves, we remember As the year starts and it ends, we remember we remember When we're weary and in need of strength We remember When we're lost and sick at heart We remember When we've joys we yearn to share We remember We remember As long as we live They too shall live they are now a part of us They are now a part of us As we remember As we remember As we remember And as we take our place in our ancestral awareness, right? It doesn't matter whether you don't have descendants and children like I do. But if we take our place as the ones carrying the torch, the love that's been invested in us, unfortunately, some wounds as well, the ancestors, some of them are not wise and well, and patterns get passed to us. And it's ours. What are we going to do with what are we going to do with our weird eyesight that we inherit from our dad and our storytelling that we inherit from our mom who learned it from our dad, who learned it from his parents? What are we going to do with this life? And it, it very quickly becomes a cosmological view. And um, Stella, <laughs> she already spotted one of the songs that's going to come which is this um, honouring of the lineage. For he shall this born a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For he shall this born a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We are our grandmother's prayers. We are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of the ancestors. We are the Spirit of God. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe. So that's one way of looking at it, is to look at the ancestral lineage. But another way is really looking at what's happening in the living earth, which actually in this moment is, is dying. And um, I've got an amazing video, another, I don't know if you'll remember, I've been sharing Grace Wells cross-quarter videos for, I think the first one was Imbolc that I shared, and then Beltane, Lunasa. Here is the one for Samhain. And I have to say, 
Grace, you're amazing. This blew me away. Enjoy. Sawan. Wisdom. Sawan, the festival of endings on the cusp of the new year. Sawan, the last gleanings before the lean months come in. The last glimpse of autumn's bounty before the Kailyak reveals her face. And the fresh fires are lit in celebration of the year past. Fires red as the hawthorn berries, small torch of endurance. Fires lit against what lies ahead. Sawan, season of shadows. Threshold to the governing dark. surrender in the fox deep owl wide night the wolf hour chill as the first frost the kayak's hand on each of us pausing us to sit in reckoning with what the year has brought, its gifts and kindness. To be with what the year has also taken. A chance to love again those we have lost. To dance once more with their flickering light. To be thankful for the time they were ours. And so little in nature to support us, but winter with its different beauty. How can this end be a beginning? Except that it is the seed unsprouted, the ground gone cold. Sawan whittling us back to the bare branch. The barren field. Whittling us back to the quick, where we're able for wind and storm, able for the spate rivers. Until the Kailyak has paired us back so far as to reveal our own star, the way it can shine brightest in the dark. Sawan, the season that asks us to love the dark. 
But no haste, days it takes. Days that turn into months with the Kailyak. Listening to her rhythms. And so long before she reveals. So long before we're quiet enough to hear. The steady heart of the earth. darkness is never darkness in your sight the deepest night is clear as the daylight our darkness is never darkness in your sight the deepest night is clear as the daylight for our darkness is never darkness in your sight the deepest night is clear as the daylight Our darkness is never darkness in your sight The deepest night is clear as the daylight What do you think of Grace's reflection video? You can find it on her YouTube page and I will link that at the end in the chat here. Please go and spend some time with that incredible video. I, I, I never watched them out of season so I hadn't seen it until yesterday and I was blown away by her tender description of how Halloween can really sorry, Samhain, how Samhain can really allow us to grow in love and become aware of our life and how we show up to our life. All right, I'm going to sing one of the Psalms. Before the mountains were born Before the earth had its form From the world that was before To the world that is to come You are Elohim For a thousand years Are just one of your days But we are like grass That quickly withers away Teach us to number our days That heart of wisdom we would gain Let years of trouble be turned to gladness Let your beauty be upon us And in the anger remember mercy For we are only dust and you've numbered our days Teach us to number our days Generations have passed The end will come at last But for all of our days You have been our dwelling place For a thousand years are just one of your days up quickly they pass 
and we all fly away. So teach us to number our days, that a heart of wisdom we will gain. Let years of trouble be turned to gladness. Let your beauty be upon us, and in the anger remember mercy, for we are only dust, and you've numbered our days. Teach us to number our days. And I, mean, I want to say something about this instruction. So teach us to number our days, that a heart of wisdom we would gain. Now how do we do that? How do we do that? Um, we've got Christine's book here. I'm keeping the spring open because the spring represents mythology and an entrance for me into the earth. <laughs> into this mystery. And um, this is Christine's brand new book. Christine Valter Painter, Midwinter God. Just started delving into it. I've actually been saving it. Saving it for the winter. This chapter, The Transformative Mythic Journey, opens with a quote by Michael Mead. Myth is about vertical imagination. Myth opens up the connections we have to the heavens and the connections we have to the underworld. On the surface, a myth is false, but it carries deeper truth than you can find anywhere else. Sorry, I'm the royal road into mythology is Halloween. <laughs> Whether you're carving pumpkins, dressing up as a witch, or it seems to be everybody dresses up as dinosaurs these days. Um, and it is child's play, but then when you really carefully look deeper into the mythology of it and our human frailty and the fact that we're going to Sit, we're, jump, we're right on the edge of joining the ancestors, you know. Um, we might be here not for much longer, and the winter, with all its harshness, is ahead of us. So much uncertainty. We live in turbulent times everywhere, not just here in the U.S. Hmm. Let me think, do I want to sing anything else before we... Yeah, I think I do. Let's sing a prayer and then we'll go into prayers for one another. And thank you for adding your comments about what your uh, Halloween Samhain practices are. Thank you for adding them to the chat. The peace of the earth be with you. Peace of the heavens too. Peace of the rivers be with you, peace of the oceans too. Deep peace falling over you, God's peace growing in you. Peace of the earth be with you, peace of the heavens too. Peace of the rivers be with you, peace of the oceans too. Deep peace falling over you, God's peace growing in you. Peace of the earth be with you, peace of the heavens too. Peace of the rivers be with you, peace of the oceans too. Deep peace falling over you, God's peace growing in you. Amen.
prayers. Please feel free to type your prayers into the chat and I will I will read them out. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. peace of the quiet earth to you deep peace of the shining stars to you deep peace of the sun of peace to you moon and stars pour their healing light on you La 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 Deep peace of the running wave to you Deep peace of the flowing air to you Quiet earth to you Deep peace Of the shining stars to you Deep peace Of the sun of peace to you Moon and stars Pour their healing light on you La 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 to the post-hurricane situation of North Carolina. Araya asks us to remember for us to pray. Araya says that she has been in a very dark place. We pray for you and your community. may be strengthened and companioned and supported in the days to come. We join Laura Lou in prayers for our young folks, so many of whom feel there's no future. We join Roxanne in prayers for Liz, mother of dear friend Christy, who's facing decisions about living with and dying from cancer. Judy, we join you in prayers that you may have resolution to the stress from your friend R's problem. We pray for everybody who is in need of prayer this day but has nobody who will pray for them by name. Diane writes, Halloween is All Hallowed Saints Day, an emphasis inspired by the ancestors, witness to dedicating our lives to extend our vision, inspire our actions, and remember the earth and all in it and upon it. Join Kanda in prayers for her friend Chris. Chris is traveling to California for treatment to ease the effects of throat cancer treatments. Susan, we surround you in prayers, especially next Tuesday, when you'll be having surgery to insert a pacemaker. May this be easy and well 
and the minor surgery that you hope it will be. Pray for a great outcome. I don't know about the situation, Stella, so I'm just going to read it out word for word. Stella asks us to prayers for deep respect for all Puerto Rican descents after such an insult thrown at them at a recent rally. Loving God, we ask you to bless and protect um, those who speak hate ask you to protect them so that we may be protected from them. And we ask you to really open the ears of people so that they don't drink in hatred. May we move from falsehood to truth. Prayers for the safety of body and mind of our election workers. And Susan, I add prayers for all of us in our body and mind as we wait and watch and pray. Loving God, please bring justice and freedom to this nation. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call. Answer me, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, come and listen to me. I invite us to uh, pass the peace. Hey, Mickey, as you saw your prayer for your daughters. And I just want to say to everybody, I do come back and, and read the prayers. <laughs> you don't need to be here and post them through the chat letterbox at exactly the time that the prayers are spoken. They are held in the hearts of people who watch the replay and people that come in and read the prayers. Thank you if you're one of those people. I've noticed that the teacher, Caroline Mice, is doing this... Uh, circle of grace where she gets people to type their prayers in and she says a prayer and she talks a little bit about the holy and the community pray for one another and I thought that's a great idea I'm glad I've been doing that for four years <laughs> and I wouldn't continue to show up and create this space every Wednesday morning if it wasn't full of healing and light and love and I have to thank all of you in the community for for that um, I want to tell you that it's a very, very busy time for me with the election coming up and the Samhain. I don't know, why, why, why do they dovetail together? Samhain, this timeless holiness. So I've got lots of events. I've got um, uh, a free Samhain event on Halloween, 3 o'clock Eastern time. Please note that our clocks here in the US haven't changed yet. They change on Sunday. Um, and on Friday, there's a really big event happening at Abbey of the Arts that I am part of, where I <laughs> will be gleaning the things that you wrote in the chat. I'll be talking about how to embody the mythology in prayer and in spiritual practice. But there's um, Noreen and Michal Sullivan are going to be there with Christine. It's going to be great. And on Sunday, I will be doing an All Souls service honouring our loved ones that have died over the year and I'm really looking at how love is th this natural force but also this thing that holds everything into sacred harmony and balance in the cosmos. And then I've got an election vigil on Tuesday and then again we'll be chanting prayers next Wednesday and there'll be chanting prayers for healing. Yeah.
I'm sure I'll be praying for peace, <laughs> not just on Tuesday, also on Wednesday. So please check out my website for that. And later on, I will post a link to Grace Wells' Samhain video so you can go and watch that again. And I'm sorry if the um, audio video wasn't so good today. One more song for us. And if, um, this might be familiar to many of you because you will have seen uh, the Dog Walk video up on YouTube. But if you haven't, um, I posted this as a kind of pre-election Everybody, let's calm down and focus on love and light so that we can pray <laughs> rather than just be fearful. Um, and this is the video that I used and the song. So I thought I would reiterate that again here as our closing blessing. Let nothing disturb you, let nothing frighten you, everything changes, I alone remain, hold patience, for nothing is wasted, presence in all things, I'm with you in all things, let nothing disturb you, let nothing frighten you, everything changes, I alone remain, hold patience, for nothing is wasted, presence in all things, I'm with you in all things, let nothing disturb you, let nothing frighten you, everything changes, I alone remain, hold patience, for nothing is wasted, presence in all things, I'm with you in all things. Closing prayer from this book, from Christine's book, one of Christine's, uh, it's an excerpt, so I'll give you a link so you can find the whole prayer. It's called Let It Be Winter Still by Christine Walters Painter. Let it be winter a while longer. Let darkness be my closest companion, cradling me in her inky velvet shawl. Let the owl cry softly from his place among the long aching branches under the bone white face of the moon let my heart break for the dead let me feel the gnawing sorrow of the woman pressing her hungry hungry children close against her body let the winter stay a while longer let her invitation to grief carry me across the haunting threshold to the place of my own great losses, until I know this black frozen landscape as my own, until the mournful songs of my ancestors vibrate in my blood, wounded in wars, the grand kind, or the smaller battles of daily life. Let the winter linger until I see each naked tree, a talisman of my sorrow. And I long to be stripped down to my own essence, reaching my arms up in supplication under a wide twilight sky. Let it be winter until the moment of the hour of spring breaks through in laboring, grasping, heaving pains. Until tiny miracles burst forth in an array of buds and blossoms, each one carrying a name, love, Kindness, compassion, hope. Each name earned only from the long, barren journey of heartbreak. Let it be winter still. Amen. Take care, everyone. 
hopefully I'll see you in some of the events that I'm doing before next Wednesday. And uh, Lyndon needs the internet, so there'll be only about 10 seconds of the closing song. <laughs> see you soon. Mm -hmm.